Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games, and today we're doing something a little different. Um, we are playing for a world record Wall Jump Ninja, which I've been neglecting to do for a long time. I've had it on my list to do, to try and regain my world record title, um, because back in 2018, I had the world record for this game, number of most number of rooms, because that's how it's calculated. And then the next year, somebody beat my record. So I would like to regain my title as world record holder. But we will get into that. Welcome to the show. Yes, there's nobody else here. So let's see how this goes. I haven't done a solo show in a very long time. Um... Yeah, like I said, today we're playing Wall Jump Ninja, which is uh, from 2015, uh, made by Tim Fitz Randolph, known as Wallaber, on the Atari Age forums. And uh, we'll see if I can beat it. James alone, so no treats for cats. Oh, there are treats still for cats. The cats will expect treats, so they will be whiny if they don't get them, that's for sure. Um, and it also gives me a break uh, during my world record attempts if I feed the cats. Uh, I want to thank the Twitch subscribers who are scrolling right here. Al Nefer, Arkham H, Armscar Coder, Atari 800, XL Rules, Atari 1974, Atari, Atari Patch Quest, BR Polka, Buck Owens, Burl Lives, Caffeman 2D, Charles Madruga. <coughs> Sorry, I just had some peanut butter. <laughs> Charles and Jack, Charles Whelan, Coconut81, Colonel Lama, Cubanismo, Dianoid, Dan AVC, Drexel, Dr. Moo Cows, Great Offender, Ground Jabro, Your Rapper, 2600, Johnny Nitro, Johnny WC, Computer, JRM, Carl G, Ken Jennings, Invader, Kev Kelly, Lauren TDZ, Marco Inez, Mark Space, Inc., Mick Muse, Mike Soul, Mike Latow, Miss Command, MK Smith, Mr. Zarner, Mr. Fix, Mighty Funster, Nathan Strom, Packer, VG Koog, RC, R. Anschwitz, RC7E, Rendered Ghost, Pendless VG, Ricardo Pim, Rod Kessler, Smitty B, Spice, where S. Ramirez, The D Train, The Welshman, Tiki Dan, K. TM Events, Trek MD, and X Ken X. And if you want to support the show and keep these poor cats fed, you can <laughs> hit subscribe. It's free with, Am with Amazon Prime, um, or you can pay. Um, just link up your Amazon Prime to your Twitch account, and it's free. Um, like I said, we're playing Wall Jump Ninja today. Um, let's take a look at just one second the world records for this right now uh, and there we go okay so the world record right now for wall jump ninja is 69 points uh, and that's some guy named arrowhead 12 from Edmonton uh, which is the province next to us. So it's a provincial rivalry, I guess. Um, and he did it on January 5th, 2019. My record of 67, you can see there, zero page, from Vancouver, BC, Canada. Uh, April 19th, 2018. So what I am aiming for today is a score of 70 or above, and I will need your help in the chat so I can figure out the strategy that I'm going to use, and we'll get into the strategy in a little bit, so I can get 70 or above. I mean, 69 will not get me the high score, because when you tie a high score, you just tie it and you're second, because the other person did it first. And if we go to my page, let's see, zero page, click on that um, you'll be able to see that I did have the world record right there wall jump ninja worldwide but cracked by arrowhead 12 so that shows that I did have the world record but somebody beat me so very sad um, I still have the world record in a VCS tech challenge that's pretty good and vault assault uh, yeah, so I still have a couple world records. Uh, somebody beat me in Draconian, but that's a fun game. I'll have to play that again, too, at some point. But today is Wall Jump Ninja. Um, it's still available from Atari Age uh, with the box, with this box. 
Um, we will not be playing the cartridge version of Wall Jump Ninja um, because this version of the cartridge is version 1.0. I am almost 100% certain. And there's a bug in version 1.0 of the game where it interferes with the Atari Vox and overwrites somebody else's score, something like that. Uh, another game's score, um, or it doesn't record properly. So we're going to be using version 1.1, uh, the updated version uh, off of the Harmony Encore cartridge. So that's why we won't have it plugged in. Um, so this was made uh, first posted about December 9th, 2014. This build, version 1.1, is from May 8th, 2016. It is a 4K game and one of the best 4K games ever made on the 2600, in my opinion. Um, you can also download version 1.1 from the Atari Age forums when they come back up. And also, today, we're going to be doing three shows. Uh, the first show is this one, uh, the world record attempt. Cat, stop attacking me. Bad. Uh, the world record attempt for Wall Jump Ninja. Uh, we're also going to be doing a normal show uh, later on at the normal time, 6 p.m. Pacific time. And we're going to be playing some compilation games as I knock everything to the floor. Uh, Dr. Typo Collection. Two Jaguar games. Dr. Typo Collection. And Brawn... Brawn and Brains. Uh, they're mini game collections, so that should be fun. And then we're doing the next part of 1983, working our way through all of the classic Atari 2600 games, day by day. Uh, and Thrust says, I think I still have the world records for Star Master. That's awesome. That is cool. You should check and see if you still do. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the box and see if the instructions give us any hints. I doubt it. Let's open this up, take a look inside. Hi. Uh, the box art is awesome on this. I love, and it reflects what the game looks like as well. So, wall jump ninja. There you go. Very colorful. Back, the outside. Introduction, as a ninja, you already have many skills, but there are many more to learn. Today, you will learn the legendary technique of the wall jump. Use it wisely or face certain doom at the hands of the death beam. How to play, adjust the difficulty switches to your liking. Press fire to begin your training. Press fire to wall jump, hold to jump higher. Avoid the spikes. Collect ninja to use your ninja dash. Do not let the death beam hit you. It's fairly simple. Um, toggle, toggle lava on and off with the left switch. Um, and with the right switch, toggle hard mode on and off. And we will be playing the non-hard mode um, because that is the record we're going for. Um, how to win. Jump through the room exits and achieve a new personal record. If you have an Atari Vox, your records will be saved between sessions. Um, and it shows what's on the screen. I'll go over that. Uh, label and logo artwork by Corey Kramer. Special thanks to the Atari Age community for their support and encouragement. So no big hints in the, um, in the instructions for us. I'll put this on the Atari so that it looks kind of cool. Okay, so let's get this going. At our Evox Plus. Ready? Let's see. Boom. Twin Galaxies wants your money for your records recorded now. Oh my god, that doesn't seem very good. You have to pay to put your records into Twin Galaxies? Is that uh, supposedly to dissuade people from putting in random scores or something. Okay. Let's get this going. Volume is good. We'll turn on the lava because it's more pretty and it doesn't really matter. 
So that best of 57, um, that is because my old Atari Vox has my world record score on it. And this is the new Atari Vox because I achieved that record a long time ago before I got the new updated Atari Vox. Okay, so if people can help me, I want to record the rooms with the letters in them. Now, which numbered rooms are have, not which letters, but just which ones have letters, because that will come into play when I decide which ones to get and which ones not to get, because really you want to hold off as long as possible to spell out Ninja, because once you spell out Ninja, then you get fast forwarded X number of screens. And I also need to know what number of screens. I think it's six. So let's get on with it. So you press the button to jump, you hold the button to jump higher. So we haven't seen any letters yet. And the uh, little, o the openings that I'm jumping through right now. So N is on room 11 or the first letters on room 11. So if somebody could just type that in the chat, 11. Then I can write it down. 19. So 11, 19. No randomness, randomness in this game, no. Everything exactly the same. 11, 19, 27. Yeah, you don't need to put the letters. It doesn't doesn't matter because if you miss one, they'll just be ends constantly. Uh, Thirty-five. See, the openings are getting much smaller now. <laughs> Forty-three. And now there's things that you have to avoid as well. Oops. There is a ceiling. So I don't want to get that one yet. So 51. Because that's the last letter I need to get. One's pretty tricky, actually. 58. I really don't want to get this one. 59, sorry. Oh, I'm gonna die. God damn it. Help. It's not supposed to say that. <laughs> it's not supposed to say anything in this game. Okay. Those, that's pretty good. So 11, 19, 27. 11, 19, 27. 35, 43, 51, and 59. Okay, so this run, we're gonna see how many rooms it jumps, and I think it's six, when I spell out Ninja. I'm taking a break from watching your 2600 1983 playthrough to watch this one. Well, thank you for joining us live, Mike Littell. Every eight, every eight rooms, uh, starting with 11. Well, that makes it a lot easier. Oh, just beat my best score <laughs> on, this, on this Atari Vox. I mean, if I can hold off till the next letter, because I made it to 61, and if it skips six, I want to get these ones now. And hopefully the next letter is like only a couple rooms away because it gets really hard as you can see especially with the obstacles in the way stop whatever you're doing you can see the letters advance as you get them so I got the I and then the next one's an N again because you're spelling out ninja oh I missed it that's okay and this one's only an experiment Experiment, not experiment. It's not a spear. 
we went over that one show. Uh, oh, now I can get this one. Sometimes you accidentally miss them because you go through um, a wall. You go through two walls because of how they're lined up. Oh yeah, I was saying you can hit your head because there is a ceiling, and if you go too high, oh, I missed that one too. Uh, if you go too high, uh, you hit your head and you come straight down on the right hand wall and you have to jump back again and forward again, which you may not have enough time to do. Okay, come on, get this one. Okay, now I just need the A. And we'll see how many fast forwards. So watch the room number. Damn it, damn it. I knew I was dead as soon as I pressed it. Oh my god, the cats. Sprite is playing with Velcro. He seems to love Velcro, and it's kind of stuck under the door, which is like a bonus for cats. Cats love making things difficult for themselves, like putting their paws through holes to try and grab something when they could have just walked around. They're kind of just practicing for getting like mice out of walls or animals out of small places. Oh my god. Uh, next should be at 67. 67 would be absolutely perfect to get. I'm going to use those numbers next time Mega Million hits a billion. Why not? Good as any other numbers. At least you'd have a story behind it when you uh, tell people how you won. Yeah, I used the numbers from uh, Wall Jump Ninja to... Oh, goddammit. To... Uh, and I got a billion dollars. And then you have to give, like, a million to uh, the Wall Jump Ninja guy. <laughs> so he can make more toys. Apparently he's a uh, a toy maker. I looked him up briefly on... Uh, when I typed his name and it came up on LinkedIn. And he, like, creates toys. Not 2600 games anymore, unfortunately. This game is absolutely perfect in its implementation. It's one button. That's all you ever use in the game is, is you're just pressing the button. Oh, come on, God. Some of them, you it's very hard to get the letter because you pass through the wall. I'm guessing that's the second N. Come on, get it. See, I almost passed through that wall, too. Sometimes you have to do a bunch of jumps, but mainly when there's uh, spikes or when there's um, plumb bobs, we call them. <laughs> Especially that one. You have to wait quite a bit. But then, as you wait... Oh, God. Okay. <gasps> oh, my God. This one... It's hard. And you really only get, like, two chances. Okay. 59 to 65, yeah. Ah. Oh. Makes a little noise when you die. Um, so you do skip six. And as predicted, 67 does have a number. Uh, uh, so we can fill that in now. And you skip six. So skip six with ninja. Okay, so the goal, really, because you don't want to, you want to skip them as late as possible because they get harder. Uh, the record is 69, so right there I was four away from getting the world record, um, but it gets massively difficult. So really, my goal right now is to get that letter, as you can see on the screen, being an A so I can spell out ninja, and then skip six, which will give me 
uh, 73, which will put me solidly in first place. M. Souza says, I love the creative devs that can do one button games like this. Yeah, and it's like, it's so dynamic with one button. It's not just like jumping over obstacles. It's like timing jumps. This is, game is all about timing and and they not just to hold, press the button, you hold the button for bigger jumps. So it's not just a simple uh, button game. Okay, so that is my goal. So I have to miss uh, N-I-N-J-A. I have to miss three, three letters and then get it on 67. And it gets really hard, as you can see right there on 66 is hard and the ones before that because I kind of fast forwarded a bit too. So now we've got the game plan. Implementing the game plan is a whole other thing. Like the holes at that level in the high in the mid 60s are are brutal. <laughs> They're about the size you are. And that's what makes it really difficult. And you really only get two chances um, based on time. You can do it really fast and get three chances, like boom, 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 but chances of you getting that fast is very low, especially if there's spikes on the left wall or a moving object. I'll skip that one because that one's hard to get anyway. This one I think is hard to get as well. Yeah. So that's two I've skipped. And those ones are very obvious skips. That one too. That's good. That's good there's three that are like actually hard to get. So you won't accidentally run into them. Like that I have to do three bounces because of the plum bob. <laughs> This one is a little hard to avoid, so I might as well get that one. Oof, oof, oof. Oh god, okay. Oh good. I like when it double skips on the higher hard levels. You have to go low on this one. Mmm, I think I have to get this one. Because it's kinda in the way. So now I'm aiming for 67 for oh god. Oof. Oh my god, that was good. Oh, that was good. Oh my god. Oh, this one you have to do in between. Oh, this one's gonna be the hard one. I'm room 65. So actually, I'm two away. Oh my god. That one's gonna be the trouble. Room 65. Because I skipped 65 when I did the fast forward. I think that's gonna be my Achilles heel, room 65. Um... Okay, and it's couch compliant, thank God. So it's a short game. Is that like two minutes? The other way is I can skip to 66, but then I have to do four levels. I mean, I'll try that after if this technique doesn't work, but I think this is gonna, like I already made it pretty far. So I only have to do two hard levels using the method that I'm doing right now. I mean, I got really lucky there. With those walls. I thought this would be a good solo game. Without Tanya, she's working. Um, because it's pretty tedious for somebody to sit here and not participate. Maybe even for you. Um, but hopefully the uh, incentive of hopefully me getting a world record is enough to keep people interested. Um, but if I'm going to play any game on my own... Oh, see, I hit the ceiling there. Um, it would be this one. It's not taxing 
on playing because it's just one button. I'm not moving the joystick, so it's not that bad for a... Oh my god, that was close. For a record to try and go for. Because you're not, like, moving the joystick constantly. Oh, that was a bit high. Oh, I think I have to get this one. Oop, not high enough. Oop, oof. Oh, nice. Double skip. Nice. I have to get this one. This one's tough. It's very high. <gasps> Almost made it through two. Oh, I'm gonna die. Gonna die. The timing of that uh, plum bob was bad. So we're going to be away in a couple weeks. That's why we're trying to fit all the um, 2600, classic 2600 games in as quickly as possible before we go away. And we'll be away for about two weeks um, because we're going to Burning Man. How many people out there have heard of Burning Man? Probably everyone. It's pretty pretty well known now. Um, the first time I went was in 2001 when hardly anybody had heard of it. I mean, it had pretty big exposure, but not mainstream, not super mainstream exposure. Um, so I went 21 years ago, which was quite a while ago. Um, the rules have changed significantly since then, um, at the event. Will you be filming there? Um, a little bit. I'll be filming a little bit. Oh, I got too many letters, I think. Mostly be taking pictures. When I went in 2001, I made, um, a feature-length documentary about it. One of the first documentaries, actually, about Burning Man. Um, with my friend and me. It was mostly about our experience, not about Burning Man itself. Um, it was it was mostly for fun. It was a fun uh, film we made. So it was a lot about the trip down there and planning. Um, but that was a lot of fun. Oh god. There we go. Um, and then I went back in... Oh, I don't want to get that yet. 2000... Three. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh god. Last chance. Damn it. 61. That's hard. Um, so I'll be filming a little bit down there. Um, the thing that is associated with Zero Page is I'm going to be taking down a gaming system and a projector to play games at Burning Man. Now, if people don't know what Burning Man is, it is... It's, uh... It's a thing <laughs> in the desert. Uh, uh, 70,000 people go to it for a week. Um, there's nothing there normally. It's just the... Uh, an empty lake bed. An ancient lake bed because there's no, no lake there unless it floods. And it's not really a lake, it just kind of floods. Um, but once a year, for a week, 70,000 people go there and set up fairly uh, a big encampment, more like a city. It has all the functionality of a city, um, except nothing is for sale there. You can't buy anything, you can't sell anything, there's no stores. Uh, it's mostly a bunch of people camping, and most of these people are artists. Um, so they make a lot of art there. So that's what it's really known for, is a lot of artwork. Um, like sculptures, mostly, and interactive sculptures. And at the and the biggest sculpture... Oh, God. Oh, fuck. Stupid. Biggest sculpture is the man. Oops. The Burning Man, which is 
quite tall, like either 40 to 60 feet. Um, it varies in height and design every year. It always looks like a man with, with a head and arms. Well, it looks like a human. It doesn't have any characteristics that make it specifically a man, but it's called Burning Man. And they burn it on the Saturday of the event. And then they burn the temple on the Sunday. But a lot of people believe after the man burns, because that's the big one. And all, uh, everybody in the whole city gathers around, so you can imagine 70,000 people in a s massive circle gathered around this massive wooden structure that they burn. It's, it's crazy. It's a huge event. So it went in 2001, 2003, and then after I Tanya, we went in 2013. And that was her first time going. That was my third time. And she loved it and wanted to go back. And I, of course, wanted to go back again. That was my third time. Um, but then, 2013, I started making a, a documentary film um, that took me several years to, you know, film it, then put it together, and then it went on a film festival tour. And that took right to the end of 2019, the whole from start to finish. And so 2019 was out of the question. And then we were planning to go in 2020. But something, something uh, worldwide happened in 2020 that everything was cancelled. Everything everywhere, as everyone knows. Um, so 2020 was out of the question. God damn it! Um, and, and then 2021, it was cancelled again. Um, people went there unofficially anyway. Like, there was no infrastructure, not sanctioned. Just people went out to the desert and put up camps and stuff. And and I guess the Nevada... Um, uh, the, the legal entities in Nevada um, that control the parks um, uh, didn't shut it down. So they were still able to do it. Oh, delivery. I'm going to have to go get that uh, after this game, before the porch pirates get it. And I think they'd put it down, so... But oh, they're not leaving. Okay, I'm going to have to go get that. In case I have to sign for it. Didn't have to sign for it, just didn't hear them walk away. Um, where was I? Well, answer the question. Important question, who's gonna take care of the cats when you're gone? Um, somebody's gonna be at our house taking care of the kitties. Yes, oh, don't pet the kitties while you're playing. Get distracted. So they will be well taken care of, no worries there. They'll be staying with a known friend. And um, at the bottom, also, you can see on the screen, it fills up a little bar, five-segmented bar, when you collect the letters, too. Inconsequential, because you just have to spell ninja. You don't really have to look at that. Unless you're on N and wondering if it's the first N or the third N, I suppose. Okay. Where was I? Oh, yes. So, this year, so the first year I went, uh, 2001, the tickets didn't even sell out to the event. You could get tickets up to the very last minute. I think you could even walk in at the door and get tickets um, because it wasn't, like, super populated. And I think there was only 35,000 people at that time. Uh, it was um, estimated the number of people going there. And, uh, yeah, so I don't remember buying tickets till very late, actually. Um, and then 2003, I think. 
it was still very easy to get tickets. And 2013, I think, was the first year to sell out beforehand. Maybe not. So I remember fighting for tickets then. Maybe it was 2003 was the last... Ooh, my God. Ah, damn it, I should have jumped beforehand. Oh, oops. Wasn't paying attention. Um... If this game would have come about back in 82, I think this would have been a smash hit. Oh, hell yeah. And there is absolutely no reason that it could not have been made in 82. Um, I mean, it's super slick, but they had all this technology. It's only a 4K game. There's nothing fancy in it. Um, it's just the physics are really well done. I don't think anybody had done physics like this, though, in 82. Jumping physics? Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm trying to think of any kind of arcing physics. I mean, there's bullets. There must have been a, an arcing bullet at some point in one of the games back then. Because all you need is, like, um, a cal calculation that somebody did for arcing, anything arcing. And then they just go, oh, just apply it to a, a person in the game. And this uh, scrolling, that's, that's easy enough. And it's like pause scrolling, which I don't know if somebody would have come up with pause scrolling, because I think that's a newer invention, a newer concept. But nothing in this couldn't have been made back in 82. Oh, come on. Do I need this one? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, I'm getting up in the rooms here. Those moving things are a pain in the ass. You gotta jump early sometimes. There we go. I gotta get this one. And then it's room 67, right? Oh. Nice. 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 Now it's tiny. Ah! Oh, needed to jump a tiny bit higher there. Room 65, that's gonna be. Arcing is just gravity. Yeah, it's, it's very simple calculation. You add a constant when you jump and subtract another one. So it's the jumping versus the gravity. Add them together and then you... Yeah, smaller constant each frame during the jump. Yeah. And you can put that in a, a table, which doesn't really take up that much room, depending on the granularity of uh, the gravity you want to add. Or how many, I guess, frames uh, that your character is moving. Yeah, it, it is very uh, a very simple calculation to do. And in 82, that's been done a million times in other games. Gravity, 100%. Um, but on a 26, I think the only thing that hadn't been done in this game would be the pause, the pause scrolling. Um, like this would be quite a, quite a high concept <laughs> for an 82. To make. I can't see it being made in 82 alongside of the other games, but there's, there was nothing, definitely nothing stopping them from doing it. Okay, back to Burning Man, because that's how I'm going to fill three hours, or however long it takes me to do this. Uh, I didn't film in, in uh, 2003. I filmed a tiny bit in 2013. Um, I filmed our trip down, uh, time-lapsed the whole thing, the trip down, using a GoPro. That turned out really well, actually. Um, and it's, re it's really cool to see... Uh, whew, that was close. Oh, that was close, too. Couldn't get any higher that. I held it the whole time. Um, really cool to see the changing terrain and especially when you get through, like, California. 
and the mountainous regions and then there's less and less trees or the or the very tree area of oh my god that was awesome of oregon um oh don't get that ape don't get that ape oh god okay oh i thought i was gonna get two in a row oh god nope dad god damn bad bad timing so a decent run. What did I get up to 65 so far? Or is it 64? I think it's 65. Is that, um, yeah, 65. So I just need to solve that 65. I don't know if you had any, any of you watched um, the channel Summoning Salt. It's a... Uh, channel dedicated to speedrun speed run history and it just reminds me a little bit of that because there's some a lot of the games are people getting to certain points actually a lot of the games like they're modern games so I can't really oh my god compare them the same but I can compare it like to one level of a, you know, a game that's a little bit newer than this. Um, so let's say Mario Brothers. And say there's a tricky thing you have to implement in one level of Mario Brothers. Or Super Mario Brothers, not Mario Brothers. Um, and I would say, like, that's room 65 on this, right? And like you can do really well on the level but there's always this one spot I think it... oh goodness ah, of course I died summoning salt doubled Arcus viewers when they covered him regarding ninja guide as speed running I bet anybody who's highlighted in summoning salt I bet anybody who's like interested in watching speed running would get a lot of A lot of viewers, especially if they're like one of the people that they trade back and forth the world record. But there's always like w the one spot in the level where it's difficult and um, this is not a randomized game, but in the speed running there's, oh my god, terrible. There's some levels that are randomized, so that he always gives it like, breaks it down to percentage. It's like, oh well, there's a 10% chance of getting this on this level. So even if you do well, you only still have a 10% chance and then you have to do it perfectly with that 10% chance of getting it. It's like, oh my God. And the speedrunners do it thousands of times. Like today, I don't know how long this takes, like a couple of minutes. Um, so multiply that out to Actually, I wonder if somebody can time how long this takes to get to, like, level ugh, 65. Room 65. It seems like it's, like, I don't know, two minutes? Three minutes? So I can do 20 in an hour, let's say. Ugh, if I do it perfectly, though, not hit my head like that. Like that. Get that one. Oh, it always ends up like that, where it's like, oh, I almost get it. Oh, I did it too high. Room 65. Hey, Tenbo. Hello back to Germany to Tenbo. I'll break out my stopwatch. So how long did that take? Because that was the perfect run to 65. Damn it. Don't know how that long it took. I would... Okay, time it now. That was a good run. That's, that's 
pretty much the run that I would want. And actually, I had an attempt at jumping too, which, which is good. And I was very close. I'm actually jumping way better than before, than the last time I played this. So, and uh, before the show, uh, Thomas Yanch um, asked me what I thought my chances were of getting the world record. And I gave him 80%. And I still hold that because I'm doing much better than I actually thought I was going to do. I thought I'd have to work my way up to that level. Um, 65. Or the equivalent of whatever I thought it was going to be, but... Um, no, I'm like hitting it pretty quick. 35 seconds for room 20. Okay. So a minute and a half then. They're all about the same speed. Some of them might take a little bit longer on. 52 seconds for room 30. Okay. You're doing by tens rather than by... That makes sense. Do I want that one? No. Oh, God. Maybe I do want that one. I do want that one, because we're getting close. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> no! Sorry, I didn't do a perfect run. That's not good. 95 seconds for room 50. So yeah, I'd say about two minutes. Two minutes a run. So, get about 30 games in an hour. Hey, Laid41. It is a super cool game. One of my favorites on the 2600. In terms of um, implementation, it's not a varied game because there's no randomization. Um, even the options, there is a hard mode, but um, it doesn't really change that much. I think it gives more obstacles, more moving obstacles, or they, they change movements a little bit. There's no randomization. But the look of it, the control of it, is unbelievable. I actually use this game to sync up my uh, recording equipment because of this, the, ma the instantaneous movement of the ninja. Like when you press the button, uh, he makes a noise for jumping. And also when the rooms change, it also makes a noise. So I can tell if the game, uh, all my equipment is in sync or not, because you have to sync everything up because everything has its own sources when you're doing streaming. That's the one that never works out. Up, oh, there we go. Ugh. I think I have to get that one. I'm at N. Oh yeah, I do need to get that one. Oh God. I think I say that every time because I get that every time. Just always works out that it's so tight that you have to um, you have to jump and get that double. And I always miss that one. I always go. Bleh. Okay. Oh god. <gasps> no no. Ugh. 118 seconds for room 60. Okay, so that's almost two minutes. Um, so, yeah, I'd say two minutes, just, just over two minutes. So 30 games, 30 games or more if I don't make it to room 60, because I definitely don't always make it to room 60. 65 a breaking point, breaking the TV, throwing the joystick at it, at, at the point after too many tries. Yeah. So it's, it's like the randomization I don't, always make it to room 65. I've made it a number of times this game, uh, this round. Oof, getting close to lava. You can turn the lava off. It, the The world record page does not specify um, lava on or off. You can loop around 
when the lava's off, you can come down off this floor and loop around to the ceiling, which is not always what you want, actually, because there's spikes. Um, so I just keep it on. Chances of you getting that low is very minimal. I never really have a difficulty with it, and it doesn't provide any ad advantage. So it looks like Twin Galaxy's not charging a fee anymore. I'm surprised they did. Wouldn't that completely limit anybody submitting a score? They probably. I, I can understand the motivation to do it, but just the look of, oh, you have to pay to get a high score doesn't look good. But I can see them wanting to do that to limit the number of garbage things they have to go through, especially if they have limited resources to evaluate um, high scores. Never make that double jump. Oh god. It's in the way. You really only have one try on that one because the 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 obstacle is in the way. And my four Star Master records are still there. Awesome, Thomas. That's awesome. Are are they world records? Are they like first place records? Or how high are your records? Yes for pal. Nice. Um, so, di for Star Master, I know every game is going to be different. Um, for Star Master, does the game play slower on pal, or did they adjust it for timings? Because I know some games, like when I'm watching like the world record. Um, attempts on like summoning salt or wherever um, some people play on NTSC and some people play at PAL because it gives them a little advantage because one is slower so it gives it a little bit easier timing um, but some games like they adjust it so that it doesn't play any faster or slower or it's like just a tiny bit off Activision never adjusted speed for PAL. Oh, so that means it's slower on PAL because there's less frames um, per second. If I'm um, thinking about that correctly. Oh, did I want that? Yeah, I do. Oh yeah, the animation on Tower Rubble is insane. <gasps> oh god. I knew I didn't have another jump in there. Yeah, I think I think he said there's like 30 different frames of animation on Tower of Rubble. There's a lot of them. Somewhere in the 20s, high 20s. Because there's jumping, there's climbing up, there's hanging on Tower of Rubble, there's... And it's just so smooth. It's not like three frames going down. It's like when you're going down a block, there's like six or eight frames of animation. It's what probably one of probably the smoothest animated game um, on the 2600. I mean, uh, Aardvark has a lot of frames of animation on the on probably the biggest sprite on uh, biggest most detailed sprite on the 2600. Um, but for the smallest sprite, definitely that has to go to Tower of Rumble. Uh, it's an Activision game, so PAL is easier. Okay, there we go. World records. Four world records. That's, that's incredible, Thomas. And that's like a well-known game. It's an Activision game. This game, it's a homebrew, so it doesn't get as much attention. It should, as any Atari game. That's a good poll question that I should put. Like, should homebrew games be 
held to the same regard as classic games. Because it's made on the same equipment. Oh, I don't want that. Same equipment, but you don't have all the resources, uh, like programming resources, or the body of knowledge. But, um... Oh, I don't want that one either. Is that going to be a problem? No. Damn it! 62. I don't think my documentary from 2001 is intact on YouTube because YouTube didn't wasn't created back then. It wasn't didn't exist. Um, the documentary made on Burning Man, um, and it also has uh, a lot of copyrighted music in it because I was just making it for fun. Um, I'm releasing it to like fans of what I did. Um, but it, there are pieces of it. floating around, but it's very low quality, unfortunately. I don't know if I could even put it on YouTube anymore without, like, just kind of destroying it because of the music. I'd have to mute all the music. Um, or I'd have to go back and put new music on it, and that's just not something I'm going to do. It's just too much work. But I'm pretty proud of it. I do like it. It's really good, uh, fun documentary. And uh, a look at very early Burning Man, when dogs were allowed there. There's no dogs allowed there anymore. Uh, I think I need that. Oh, kittens. No, I'm doing okay. Don't mess with me, kitten. <gasps> oh, oof, oof, that was close. Oh, I need another jump. I only have one chance at this. There we go. I need that J. Oh, come on. I need to get that one time. At least one time. God damn it! Someone should organize a break for James. That can happen anytime. Anytime. If you have the points, we can have a little break. Then I can have some water, and the cats can have a little treat. Right? Cats can have a little salami. Right? Just for a treat. <laughs> um, oh, another thing. When you go to Burning Man, you have to get a... Uh, should I get that? Um, media pass um, to film in a capacity where you're going to release it for public viewing. Uh, you can you can take pictures and film for private, um, but if you want to like make a movie or something, you have to get a media pass. And when I applied for a media pass in 2001, something very interesting happened. Um, they're kind of cagey about it. I was like, that's kind of weird. Um, and then they wanted to, like, they wanted to phone me and talk to me. I was like, is this just normal? And I'm like, okay, I'm fine. You can talk to me. Uh, I'm just making a, a film for, you know, fans and stuff, releasing it. Not even really not even really selling it. I wasn't planning on selling it. We did make DV compilations later of it. Um, but um, they phoned me. And they're asking me a bunch of questions, like where I lived, and even though I told them where I lived already. Um, and, and at the end, they're like, oh yeah, it's all cool. Um, but they told me why, at the end of the conversation, why they wanted to talk to me. Because there's this another guy with my exact same name. Not same middle name, but uh, oh, I don't want to get that. 
Um, one second. Ah! Stop it! I'm gonna chase it over there anyway. Um, that does nefarious things at Burning Man with my same first and last name. Um, so they wanted to make sure I was not that guy, and that guy lived in California. And they have had to uh, take legal action against that guy um, before. And they wanted to make sure I was not that person. Um, but I'm not that person, so they, they gave me the media pass, which was cool. How come I'm not making it up to level 65 anymore? <laughs> I'm making up to 63. I mean, it, it is hard up there, and I was surprised I made it through those. Yeah, Thomas is a pretty big VCS nerd. He also makes awesome games. Check out Robot City if you haven't already checked it out. It is incredible. Incredible. Ooh, that was a bit low. Oh, I can still make it. Okay. And Boulder Dash. Re-release of Boulder Dash is coming, actually, too. Forgot about that. It's going to be a PRGE. Unlimited release of it. Need that J... Nope. Oh. Took a long break after I got my C64. Ah. It's treat time. Oh, it's treat time for cats. Oh, so exciting. <laughs> I like getting them hyped up too. Thank you. Who put that in? RC7E. Good timing too. Meow. What? What do you want? <laughs> Treats for cats. <laughs> hmm? Are your mouths full of saliva? Oh, one from Sprite. For you. You know what to do. I don't hear any dings. Ring the bell. Ring it. Come on, press it. There you go, good Sprite. Come on, Atari, ring the bell. Ring it, ring the bell. Hit it, harder. Ring the bell, ring it. What are you doing standing there? Come on. Sprite's getting absolutely every single one of them. Okay, come on, ring it. Good kitty, finally, no. That's for, that's for Atari. Oh my God. It's like one to six. Sprite's like dominating. I don't think he chews it. Oh, he chews it. Oh, that was so soft, Atari, but I heard it. There you go. Hit it harder. I did see you hit it, but you have to hit it harder. Come on. Like that. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Hit it. Come on. Oh, you're barely touching it. Come on. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Good kitty. There we go. <laughs> Sprite is an expert at it. Atari's like such a soft paw on it. No, no, no. Come, come on. One more for Atari. Yay. Oh, that was good. Good kitty. Gone. Gone, gone, gone. Gone, gone, gone. I think Atari thinks he can get them for free like Pixel did. I think so. I'm just gonna wash my hands because these smell of cat treats. They stink. One second. Meow. 
meow, meow. And now the cats are gone, of course. They have left the building. We got our treats. Put the fan on me. I'm gonna have a drink of water and we will continue. Oh, good question, Master Kasey. Did you make any uh, Commodore 64 games? Okay, we're ready, ready to dominate. Are you ready? Hmm? Okay. Yes, I started coding with C64. Later I switched to Intel and then back to 2600 when the Intels became too complex for handcrafted assembler. Ah. Okay. Could you still not make like um, games for old Intel uh, systems, just like you would make for 2600. Oh, happy purring cat. Because I know there's like people who make demos for very specific eras of um, PCs. I bet it's probably more fun to like make them f make games for the most modern system or really old systems, not like stuff in between. No, I did not code any C64 games, just tools like tape loader and basic extensions. Uh, okay. No games. been thinking about that idea for a single pixel game because um, somebody brought up like oh somebody should make a single pixel game so I've got some ideas for it but I literally would have to take time off of the stream to uh, program anything because I would have to intensely focus on learning um, programming for well let's get that for the 2600. Like, I'd, I've started the basics, but I would have to really concentrate on it to make sure that uh, I could keep up with it. Luckily, there's a excellent... Oh, God. Nope. Damn it. Damn it, damn it. Terrible, 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 terrible. There's going to be a point where I'm going to switch tactics. It's already two. Ooh, when should I do that? I'm probably going to switch tactics at 2.30. Yeah. And get the ninja at um, 59. Or not 59. Yeah. 59 and then manually try and get the record. It's gonna be a lot harder though. I don't think that tactic's gonna work. Oh yeah, okay, I'll tell you the story of ticketing. So, uh, it used of ticketing for Burning Man. That's the topic I'm going to talk about today during this. Um, so it used to be, like, when I first went, 2001, um, you could get tickets anytime, didn't sell out. Um, 2003, oh, terrible. Might have been the first year it sold out. Oh my god, I'm up to A already? No, no, no. I have to avoid a bunch of letters then. Um, 2013, we had to definitely fight for tickets. Um, I can't remember when we got tickets in relation to, uh, the, s the selling of them, but I can tell you how it went this year. Um, so there is, like, 
I have to wait. Wait one second. Ah! Uh, okay. It's three major sales for tickets. The first one is FOMO tickets. Fear of missing out. And I believe there's two tiers in that one. It starts in February, I think, that those go on sale. Um, and they are $2,500 tickets and $1,500 tickets. All US prices, I think. These are for people who have a lot of money <laughs> and just want to make sure they get tickets. Um, that's probably the easiest way to get tickets, is kind of pay your way in to get tickets. Um, then there is the main sale for tickets. And I believe those are um, like six hundred, six hundred dollars, six fifty, something like that. You always make the same mistake. Have to make it first try. Yeah, there's just no room for this a second try there. Um, six hundred and fifty dollar tickets, and that's like it's called the main sale. And um, and we tried for tickets there because we weren't going to pay fifteen hundred dollars or two thousand, two and a half thousand dollars for tickets. Um, we failed. And uh, so after the main sale, you can apply for something called Step. I can't remember what it stands for. <laughs> it's an acronym. Um, and you put your name in pretty much into um, not a lottery, but in. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have gotten that. That's too early. Maybe not. Oh God. Um, you put your name in so that the f first person to um, give up their tickets gets uh, the first person in line gets the tickets that are given up. Oh my God. Ah, oh, die by electrocution. Yeah, you, you just, uh, you sign up for tickets, and when there's tickets available, you get them. And you get them in order of when you signed up for the step. Um, then there is Oh My God Sale, which just happened last week, I think. Yeah, let's say last week. Um, and that is the last sale, and which is pretty much like, yeah, this is, this is it. And there's only... Th 3,000 tickets. I think there's like 2,000 in the FOMO, 10,000 in this in the main sale, and 3,000 in the Oh My God sale. And we are all ready to try for the Oh My God sale. Just sit there, wait for tickets. But the day before, literally the day before, Tanya and I got tickets in the step program. So we randomly got tickets because we were in order. Um, so we didn't have to do the Oh My God sale. But I tried for the Oh My God sale anyway and just have fun. And I did not get tickets in the Oh My God sale. Um, oh, I don't know if I should have got that. I think so. So it's actually really good we got them in step. Otherwise, we would not be going, most likely. Oh, come on. When you jump, you have to kind of time it so you can watch your height and let it go just before... Ah! I was talking. I should have been concentrating. When it gets hard, I, I, I don't, I still don't get why the VCS community seems to be the biggest. Um, although it is so hard and frustrating to program for the system, it's kind of self-torture. <laughs> I think it's the same appeal that the Vectrex has. It's difficult, but it's flexible at the same time. The VCS you can make things way ahead of its time, like in 1977 architecture of, of a system. And it's because they, because there's no video buffer, full screen video, video buffer, is 
the reason that you can be so flexible with it and make amazing advanced games. Um, systems with video buffer, you're limited to what the video can put out. Like in full screen, there's there's video memory and that you fill it and it's done. You can only put so many blocks on the screen, um, so many colors. The VCS draws line by line. So every new line, every line is something new. It doesn't matter what you drew on the last line, it's a brand new line. And the VCS has 128 colors, which destroyed for such a long time compared to other systems. So those two factors are really what puts it ahead of the competition and what makes it so fun because you can make super colorful games like this one. Just look at it, look at the colors. From something from 1977. Like I'm literally playing it on a VCS, on a, on a six switcher, a light, uh, light sixer. Ugh. Stupid timing, god damn it. Um, yeah, Splendid Nut said programming on the VCS is not hard, just a lot of work. Yeah, there's a lot of timing issues that you have to uh, take care of on a VCS. Because you have to do everything on. You have to do all your drawing on the line. Everything we want to put on the line, you have to make sure you have time to put that on the line. Some of these things you can do before you draw the line. Like you can see the bands of color in the background. That's, um, that's drawn using the background color. You can see they're kind of thick. So they are, they look like some, the smallest ones look like they're four pixels high, if I had to estimate. Um, so you could draw that on the first line or kind of prep it just before the first line and then not do anything for four lines. So you have all that room. And all you have to do is change the color. So it's like it's one command to change the color on the background. And um, you might have to look up the color. You'll have to look up the color. So it's like two commands or whatever. Um, so that doesn't take up much room. But then there is, in this game, there's also a, uh, there's only two player characters. One of them is the ninja, or two player sprites, let's say. One of them's a ninja, and then another one is the spikes. Why did I do it that way? Come on. Um, the spikes or the thing moving around. I do want that one. I'm going to shut up now. Damn it, room 61. <laughs> yeah, music on the 2600. Uh, that is a challenge. People have solved the problem, but originally it was a challenge. There's two voices and a limited number of sounds that you can make. This is just basic sounds. Um, there's no musical keys. For some reason, they thought, mm, we don't need music. We'll just make different tones. Um, which is fine. It, I don't know if it, it was an advantage or a disadvantage in the end. But you could only make certain tones. They, they just took the highest and lowest and then chopped it up into 128, I think, or 64. I haven't done, I haven't really looked into music that much. So you get some that are close to being on tune, a lot that are not on tune. And a great story is Pressure Cooker, development of Pressure Cooker for the music. Uh, he gave, um, Gary Kitchen gave the musician uh, the composer for the music of Pressure Cooker. Um, here are all the notes you can play. <laughs> Compose something with these notes. So the uh, composer put little stickers on his uh, keyboard, piano, and so he knew which notes he could play, and then he composed a tune using just those notes. And he came up with a really good song. 
but it's still like not perfectly in tune, but he picked ones that were in tune enough. And, uh, but then people were able to figure out um, digital music and also able to, um, I think like fluctuate the notes up and down so that, damn it, damn it, damn it. I always jump backwards the wrong way. Jump way too quick because I'm worried about the electrocution coming. Why is that level giving me trouble? Is it 2.30? No, another 10 minutes before I switch tactics. The other tactic is not great, <laughs> but it's also not bad, but I, I definitely peaked on this tactic. My chances of getting the world record today uh, have plummeted from 80% <laughs> that I told Thomas at the beginning uh, down to maybe 30 now. Because <laughs> I felt really confident at the beginning. I was getting up to room, what, 66? With, room 66 without jumping? Because I was just play, playing it really casual. Now I'm like... Thomas never believed the 80% anyway. <laughs> Not even at the beginning. I was doing really well. Come on. I only needed a couple more rooms. I would have made it. Three more rooms. Three? Well. No, because I fast forwarded to room six. Did I fast forward to room 66? I must have. Yeah. What? Zero now is my birthday? It is. Is it your birthday? That's yeah, an early show. Early solo show. Because I'm going for records. Oh, that almost hit my head on that one. Okay, I'm a... There. See, that's how you do it. Accidentally got the A. Damn it. Room sixty four. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I'm currently reading the book of Howard Scott Warshaw. Your statement coincides with his words. And as now a psychologist, he reveals a few interesting thought processes of programmers. Yeah, very close on that one. Yeah, uh, uh, Howard Scott Warshaw's book is, is quite good. Um, I bought it and yeah, it's really, really good. It's a really fun read. I'm not, I'm not sure on the way he structures it. I, I would have probably liked just an, an in-order version of everything because he kind of focuses it on the um, the ET dig in the desert or the Atari 2600 buried in the desert video game kind of dig and he goes back and forth with that over and over in the book and it really feels really stretched out um I think a simple teaser at the beginning of the dig, and then, you know, maybe once go back to it in the middle, and then go back to the end. But I think he like goes back to it every second uh, chapter, and it just, it's too thinly stretched. I can understand why he did it, because that's like, oh, everybody knows about that thing, and that's the big thing. Um, but the content is so interesting that I don't think it was necessary. It's all about E.T. for him. Well, you know, if you have something famous that you made, um, I can understand why you'd lean on that. And not even lean on that, just people know you for it, so you, you're automatically pushed to do that. It's like, oh, if you're a TV star and you try and do stuff after that, you know, TV show, and everybody's like, no, no, say the catchphrase, you kind of have to say the catchphrase. <laughs> Which kind of sucks, but that's the reality of stardom i guess unless you're like really talented you're able to just magically do awesome things your whole life 
and uh, keep doing them. You bastard. Oh, electrocution. Say the line, Bart. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I like uh, kind of reinventing myself every decade or so. Um, so I've led many different types of lives, um, doing very different public things. Um, some viewers of this show know some of the other stuff that I've done in the past. And then, you know, I just don't do that anymore. And, I mean, this, this is kind of related. This is broadcasting. It's always related to something public, something that I'm streaming or putting out to the public. Um... And it usually involves me be, be, being public facing as well, even though that's not what I think I'm good at. I think I'm really decent at organizing things, keeping track of things, and then I just find by default that if I don't present it, <laughs> I feel like the person that, that could present it is not doing a uh, uh, as good of a job as I could do presenting it, or, you know, something like that. I think it's more about control. Just controlling things, how they, how they look and are presented to the public. But... There. No double jump. I need that J, though. Ah! Damn it. Room 62. Uh, Charles Reese, follow. Two years, nine months, 28 days. Yeah, if you... Let's see. My first public thing I ever did, like I was a public persona, was... Probably dates back to 1990. That's when I first like, okay, I'm gonna, gonna put myself out there. Uh, I think that, that was my first band. And then I worked at a college radio station, did various things there. And then I did my, then um, did my own radio station on the internet in uh, 1999. And that ran for 20 years. It's the longest-running internet-only radio station in the world. Uh, and then I was in another band, which is kind of on hiatus, but still operating. Um, then I started making movies uh, after 2009. And then I'm still, do still making movies. And then I did this starting in 2018, but I started planning this in like 2015. Because I, I don't know when I registered the domain, but it's like 2015, 2016. But I wanted to do it perfectly, so I had to wait till I had my um, 2600 modded and a video capture device and um, yeah, I just organized it in the right way. Need that J. The most new, newest recent thing was doing that, um, Room 64. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Uh, I'm a singer. 
I'm a singer. I, I know music. I can play music. But, um, okay, I'm going to go for the alternate way of getting the high score. I'm going to get the A on... Because I was trying to get the A, the A the, in Ninja on room 67. And I'm always like, room 64 or 65 is the highest I've got. Oh, did I get room 66? That's with fast forwarding. So now I'm going to get the A on room 59, which is very achievable. Because I make it there most of the time. So I've been in a, uh, essentially two bands. One that ran from... Um, 1990 to 90, well, eight, like, yeah, 1990 to 94, and this most recent one from 2000 to now, and it's a whole album's worth of music that I need to record my vocals on, but it's all about amount of time you have and priorities. And right now this show takes up, I'd say, almost all my time. It's divided between this show and um, developing uh, movies. Movies slash TV shows. And that takes up 100% of my time. Of my um, free time, let's say. My professional time. The rest is... Um, you know, with, with Tanya, doing stuff, obviously. Hanging out, going on vacations. But this is just so much fun, doing the show, that I don't want to give it up. Don't even reduce it. <laughs> so it's really tough, because I really want to do that album. And it would take me, like, probably a couple months solid to, to get that done. get my singing chops back up. Oh, I missed the... <laughs> I missed the one I wanted to get to, but it was like, oh, okay. I'm doing pretty good anyway. Room 65. That room is brutal when you make it to it. You do have, you do have two chances to get through there. But it's so hard, because you have to launch between those spikes. Oh, my real job is a uh, producer and editor of films and TV shows. That's why I have a little bit of knowledge in, like, you know, presenting video, making it look good, and producing, producing things, really. That's my strength, is producing things. I just seem to end up being in those things. <laughs> I need to get more letters earlier. Oh my god, I'm looking at the chat. <laughs> Selfishly, I dig it, but I also dig this. Dig what? Dig me taking two months off to do a, do a, an album? <laughs> I also want to make a game, and I've got a stack full of games. Like, probably 25 games by now that I want to make. Uh, Atari 2600 games. They're all 100% feasible because I, I know what can be made on a 2600, because I play them every day, all day. Um, and I know some of them would be very, very good. Uh, some of them are ports. Like, three or four are ports, and I, I, I've I, picked one now that surpassed the other port that I wanted to make. Um, that's even easier to make than the other port. And nobody's ever done it, and I can't believe nobody's ever done this port. For the uh, 2600. It's so simple. Not even a something like the port has been made. Well, kind of. Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of. Um, I don't want to reveal it, because I still want to make it. But I think I'd have to take two months off for that. And um, if nothing comes up, I'm probably going to do a two-month break next summer. 
Because summer is just, is very slow for 2600 development, like really slow. Um, I kind of filled in the gap with doing all the, playing every single classic 2600 game. That's taken up a ton of time. Oh my God, it's out of control. 25, not gonna happen. What? What's 25? I missed whatever 25. Did I say something it was 25? Don't remember. Sorry. 25 games. 20 Oh, I'm not going to make 25 games. They're more like, yeah, just ideas that, um, you know, you, everybody has ideas and the best ones always just rise to the top. You always, that's the best way of doing things, I find, is that you just write down ideas, write down more ideas, more ideas, and the one that rises to the top is the one you do. It's it's gonna be the best one because it's the one you just keep going back to and you keep thinking about and you're like, oh, yeah, I can implement it this way, I can do it this way, yeah, then people are really gonna like this one or I'm gonna like making this one or it's easy to make this one. Okay, I have to get it on 59, so I need to get this one. Then I need to get the next one. Oh, come on. Yeah, nobody's going to make 25 games in their lifetime. Um, not me, anyway. <laughs> oh, that was a risky jump. Okay, here it is. Here's the fun. Now we transport me to a uh, really hard level. Pfft. See, <laughs> see, I have to do five levels of di really difficult ones. Twenty-five. Wow, I could not come up with one idea. What uh, of those twenty-five is the most yet completed in percentage? Um, I mean, the ports don't count because they're done. They're just like, yeah, just do it. <laughs> Program it on the twenty-six hundred. I have not started any of them because I'd have no time. I've kind of started one of them, one of the ports, but I'm gonna switch uh, to a different one because it's a hundred times easier. Um, like literally a hundred times easier. Um, and the other ones, like my original ones, um, I would say about f five of them maybe would be at the 75% mark. And the rest of them would be like at the 10 to 50% mark. Some of them are just like, oh, there's a ball that bounces or something <laughs> and it goes through this type of terrain um, which can be enough sometimes it's like okay and then you just add obstacles and you change the terrain or whatever and that's 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 for some reason i'm obsessed with bouncing balls <laughs> making games with bouncing balls that's what a lot of them are um, but there's other ones that aren't bouncing balls <laughs> oh what is this something changed what changed Oh, the forums. Something on the forums changed. We'll check that out in a second. Whoa, that was close. Need one more? Need two more. Oh, oh, I think I did this wrong. Oh, well. See, if I do it wrong, I can still go for the other way to win. It's not easy, but... use still in the time machine for training i have done that i've made it up to level 99 it doesn't it doesn't really help with the training i found and i get up to a high enough level that it's kind of training anyway so let's see what changed it's the old atari age forms what changed here ah new update 4 30 p.m cst Files are still copying, but I was told they should be done in a few hours. 
uh, after which progr progress will move along considerably more quickly. I'll be anxiously waiting for them to hand over the reins. Okay, so um, that's an update from Al. The files are still copying over from the old forum to the new forum. Um, and But he says they're going to be done soonish. And then as soon as the old files are copied over to the new forum, that means he can uh, start implementing the new forum, uh, making sure they all connect right. I'm guessing all the like the graphics connect right, the links connect right. Because he's changing... Oh god, I was thinking about something else. Um, because he's changed the domain name of the forums. I'm sure he's going to keep the old one, and because there's going to be a lot of external links, unless there's an auto-translate to those, the new forum, uh, which wouldn't be too hard, actually. So we'll see what he does. See if both operate at the same time, or if it's a, um, a forwarding thing or a uh, URL translation. Thrust says, I'll check tomorrow morning my time. Chances seem 50-50. Yeah, what time is it right now for you? I think 4 o'clock is like midnight over there, or 1 a.m.? So it must be almost midnight where you are, Thrust. I, unless you're going to stay up really late on a Tuesday. <laughs> Probably don't want to wait for the new forms to come up. I think there's going to be, there's always something that comes up. It's very rarely a smooth transition. I don't know if he's done a test run yet or not, as well. Like, moved over some of the forum. I would think you would want to do a test run, especially when you're changing versions. But who knows? Didn't ask him about that. It's 11.40. That's what I thought. You are nine hours out of us. I seem to remember that from last time. Get the N... I need my chart back. Spam. Oh, God. Ah. Oh. Damn you, spam. Good time to take a water break. Okay, cats. I am going to... There's a hard quitting time at 4 o'clock. Um, because the cats get fed then, so I thought that would be a good time. Three hours, it's enough of... Uh, concentrate! Or if I start just failing constantly, then I know I've gone over the, um... Gone over the hump of... Gone over the curve of playability. <laughs> I don't know if anybody has noticed that when they play games and they're trying to get a high score or try and do well. Um, there's two ways I find it goes for me. One, it's getting bad. One way is that I start off, you know, doing okay, and then it gets better and better. And then I do really well, and I get really close to what I'm hoping to get, and then it gets worse and worse and worse. And then I just have to give up because it's just, it goes in the trash, my gameplay. That's the usual one. Then there's the other one, where the first couple of games you do really well, for no reason at all. Probably because there's no stress, there's no pressure, because you're not even, like, really thinking about it. You're just kind of just doing it. Um, and then you kind of get a little bad, because you're like, now you're trying to play. And then you get better. And then you get bad again. Um, usually it's not the first one. I find only that happens with games I've never played before. So now I have to get the second one. I don't think this is the easier way to get the world record, though. Just don't. Because I think there's more difficult rooms this way total. Oh, come on. Just get over there. Like, I don't think this is the best way to do it. 
At least it puts you on one where there's no... See, I only get two attempts. Oh, thrust is gone. Thanks for hanging out, Thomas. I'm gonna go back to the old method at three o'clock, I think. In 15 minutes. You think you've got the pattern, the rhythm to it, and you find out you're wrong, wrong, wrong. Yep. Now my strategy for this, for the openings, is that you kind of let go just before you hit where you want to be um, because of reaction time. He stops moving vertically instantly as soon as you let go of the button. But because of human reaction time, you have to think a little bit ahead watching your jump when you're uh, trying to get through that. Um, well, that was terrible. I knew that was coming too. I hit too low. I had to jump low, then back, and then high again. Think I'm over that hump. Think I'm declining. Oh, first lava. It's not looking good, everyone. Neu neutral lag. Neural lag. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good um, name for it. The neural lag time. I wonder if you can measure neural lag. You must be able to because if you can measure when you think about doing something, it's not only neural lag, but um, electronic lag in in your uh, body as well. Like your brain tells you, okay, press the button. Then your body has to implement pressing the button and that takes time. And there's even travel time for my thumb. Right. And I keep it at a certain distance, but I'm accounting for all of those things, right? Counting for the neural lag. I'm accounting for the lag that my brain tells my thumb to press it. And I'm also accounting for the lag for the distance that my thumb has to travel. And my brain is all compensating for that, just like it um, turns everything you see upside down because everything that goes into your eyes is actually upside down. If you didn't know. Um, oh, come on. I'm not paying attention. That's the thing. I'm not paying like really close attention to the feet of the ninja, and that's how I uh, judge it, is by the feet. How high are the feet? And that's when I let go. Was too high. That's death. Damn it. You need to shorten the nervous system travel time. Play using your tongue. I don't think that's the longest. I think that's measured in like picoseconds. <laughs> so I don't know if that's really a factor. I think the neural lag would be um, more of a factor. Now, I thought playing this today would be a good idea because um, because of the forums being down. So if people wanted some entertainment, because I'm on the forums like almost all day long. Every bit helps, yeah. Because I'm checking for new games, because uh, I keep lists of every Atari game that comes out, except for Atari ST. All the homebrew. Uh, 2600, 5200, 7800, Lynx, Jaguar, and 8-bit games. And I keep lists of them because I do, I host um, the Atari Homebrew Awards at the end of the year. So, rather than do it all at the end of the year, which is an enormous amount of work, on top of the amount of work I already have to do, come on, for the Atari homebrew awards. I do it throughout the year. It's And it also helps with the show because I know what new games to play too. So it uh, helps on two fronts.
Um. Uh, the Atari Homebrew Awards are going to add Jaguar this year. Jaguar games. So that will be fun. Not many get made, but the ones that get made are pretty good. It's probably going to be a couple... Oh, come on. For once, I want to get through that. Oh, I missed it. I'm not getting all the letters I need in time. I mean, it's it's okay because I'm ne then playing both systems at once. So if I miss the, the letters, then it's fine. So I really have to strive to get all the letters if I can. So we've been doing this show for four and a half years now. It has been a lot of fun. I didn't know if we'd make it four and a half years. Or even two years, or even one year. <laughs> but we got quite a decent following, like 1,100 followers on Twitch, 1.3 thousand followers on YouTube now. I think I've pretty much got most of the homebrew community <laughs> watching um, that, you know, watch things on YouTube and Twitch. That second end keeps being in the wrong spot. Yeah, some of them I just can't get. I have to, like, like this one, you mean? There. I tagged my uh, foot on it. Yeah, because I go through that automatically. So it's actually challenging to get that second end. There we go. I have to do it at uh, room 59. I think I got that one too early. That's fine. As long as I don't automatically get the A. If, oh, like, very few of them are, like, automatic gets. Like, you can't avoid them. Most of them are placed in spots. Oh, come on. That, um... You have to work a little bit, or it's actually even hard to get them. Here we go! Warp time! Love the look of the warp, too. Almost threw me right through it. It's too hard. Five, how am I? Seven more minutes to try this tactic. I don't think it's, because I haven't been through that, I've been able to get through that one, and I have five to do that way. The other way, it's, I have like three? Three to do to tie. Four. It's one less. But they're easier because they're earlier. Are they? No. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, they they are earlier. Because 59 takes you to 65, which I'm trying to get anyway, but I'm trying to get to 67, so I don't have to do 67, 68, 69. And... And seven, no, you just have to make it to 70. Yeah, you just have to pass 69. Is this the longest public project I've done? I think it is. It's my radio, sh I've done a number of radio shows. One lasted a year and a half. One lasted a year. And then... One lasted... I was only the co-host on the other one, so that doesn't really count. I wasn't the permanent co-host. I was only, like, once a week. That was really close. Um, then I did a live TV show, 2003, and that was 13 episodes. That was, like, lasted a couple months. I was co-host on that. I wasn't the host. What? Come on. Uh. I think I'm going downhill. Downhill. I'm not even making it to the room 
Yeah, that is showing that I'm going downhill. When I'm hitting the ceiling and when I'm hitting the lava. Bad news. Whoa! Rendered Ghost says that's when I found you around 2003-ish. Oh, really? With the TV show? Or was it the TV show? Amp TV, yep. That was crazy. We were one of the first, I would say, first live TV shows on the internet. Um, first live broadcasts. Like live live, not pre-recorded stuff broadcast, but live live. Um, I could probably guarantee we're the first live talk show on the internet, internet only. So there's lots that like rebroadcast something that was on another um, medium. But like this is before YouTube, this is before real streaming. Winamp was like the only the second thing like uh, after like real player. Like you could broadcast with real player, but it you had to get a license, so that was a big barrier to entry. So a lot of the stuff on uh, real player was like a secondary stream of something that already existed. Um, so that was a challenge. The quality was like 320 by 200 because of bandwidth. You had to do, and we're at 15 frames a second, I believe. 320 by 200 at 15 frames a second. Bandwidth was not what it was today in 2003, let's say. Oh, going for the hard one, I think. Oh, well, maybe not. No, I can still do it. You bastard! Hit the bloody top of the screen. It's a good run. Um, then my, f let's see, what else? Um, I mean, I've done video projects, but nothing that was like a regular thing. All the radio and, and video broadcasts were a regular thing. So this definitely is the longest where I was like a constant host on it. One of the radio shows uh, went for five years, um, but I was just a co-host once a week on it. Uh, at first it was broadcast once a week and then it went daily and that but I was only on the show still the once a week. So I wouldn't count that because I was on every episode. So this is definitely the longest, especially when I hit five years. Hot in here, 28 degrees. Not as hot as it has been, but it's only like two degrees lower than when it got to 30. I think that was the hottest. That was last week. It's, it's hot again this week. Not quite as hot, but not comfortable. Could somebody look up what the temperature is in Burning Man right now? Uh, Black Rock City, it's called. So no, I know what I'm in for in two weeks. I mean, the temperatures can change. The fact is that it's a desert, so it gets actually really warm in the day and then really cold at night. Not really cold, but it can get cold. Well, it looks like we're going for the hard, hard mode. I think it's time anyway to switch back my tactics. enough height I was fell too low it's 31 degrees that's not bad actually I can get up to 40 there or much higher but it's dry 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 because it's a desert and what are the lows um, thank you for putting in Celsius too <laughs> otherwise it'd be like uh, I don't know what that is um, I think they were saying about 14 14 at the lowest it goes hopefully it's like 19 would be nice for lows, but we have to dress for like 14, 15, which is still not that bad. And any projected temperatures too 
for the next like week. I mean, within a week, it's f fairly decent, I find, for predicting temperatures. Outside of a week, it's like roll the dice. It's it's not going to be that, unless you live in an area that just doesn't change at all. But uh, Vancouver, where I live, it changes quite a lot. <laughs> It can be rainy, it can be very hot, it could be, not very hot, but hot. 18 to 22 lowest. Oh, nice. That is great. So I really don't want to put on lots of clothing, clothing at night. It's just, it'll be easier. Next week is low 30s. Okay, so it's going to be warm. Which I don't mind. I bought clothes for warmth, or bought lack of clothes for uh, warmth, if you've ever seen what people wear at uh, Burning Man. It's uh, not a lot. And mostly very, <clears throat> very bright stuff. Especially at night, you light up everything. You put, uh, you have to, or you got run over. Or you get yelled at, be called a dark wad. Oh, damn it, I knew it, it jumped too early. Another good thing about this game is the changing colors. If you're going to make a game, even the simplest game where you like literally repetitively do things over and over like this you have to change things you have to change how it looks a little bit and the best way to do that is change color so you know oh i made it to the blue part I made it to the green part this one is really great at changing colors is it is it every 20 it changes yep every 20. so you know oh i made it to 40 or i made it to 60. Excellent use of colors, yeah. Everything about this is just, it's just brilliant. I don't know if the lava is random. Can't tell, because I'm playing. <laughs> but uh, kind of looks like it just wiggles at random. Which would be easy to do for lava. Made it to purple and green. Because it's just like, oh, turn these on or off. And when you turn these on, turn these off. Or it has like a number of preset things. Oh my god, I almost jumped into it. So I held down the button now accidentally. Back to the old tactic. Just have to make it to room 57. You only get one chance at that one. Oh my god. I think the lava is simple a binary counter. Oh, it is! Is it? Yes, it is. Works? Because you're not really like it. There's so many different segments of it that you can't really tell. Yeah, it makes the code really, really simple. Add one, add one, add one, add one, add one. Let it roll over. Who cares? Add one. Or does it roll over? I don't think it rolls over. Is it ever flat? It, it looks like it resets at a point, so it's not flat. And it's mirrored. Uh, reflected. But you can't really tell that. Yeah, if simple code works, it does roll, okay. If simple code works, use it, why not? Yeah, they're in segments of four, yeah. Four pixels wide. Oh my goodness, okay. I'm not really peeking yet, because I, I still get decent scores not as decent as I was getting but I'm still getting up pretty high so I don't feel like giving up yet and I do have to I'm already on a um, oof. I do have to do a bit of prep for the next show so I think I'm gonna have to call it at a certain time I have to feed the cats 
and make a bit of dinner. The next show is not for till seven o'clock, which is in four hours. Which is enough time to prep. There's enough time to prep. Oh God. Tempting, but I'm not gonna do it. Damn it! Ah! Room 61. I have to make it to room 67! Ah! So far away! <laughs> so far away. Which me brings me back, should I do the other way? Because that brings me to room 65. Which means I only have to do five. But that method, I have to still do six. And it's... It's random whether I can do six or not. And the first one is... Room doesn't have a thing going down and up. Oh, my God. I'm just going to let fate decide. If I get the N's and the, and the letters, I'll, I'll do the early one. If I miss it, I'll do the later one. Oh, I also have to go to the post office. Because something special came in the mail today. Something very special that we're going to reveal on the 7 o'clock show in uh, four hours. I missed it. Then. You do not want to miss it. We're going to unbox it. We're not going to hook it up, but we're going to unbox it. Hooking it up for is, is for another show. You can guess what it is already. I've been talking about it. Ooh, it's goodies. It's some good goodies. Oh, I missed another end. Oh. I think I might have to go for the long one by force. It is goodies. They've been in the works. The goodies have been in the works for... Ugh, bloody hell. For a number of months. Been talking non-stop about it. Uh, Chow Sedan and Mao. You should know what it is. You, you've been around. Talk about it like every, every show, every second show. See if you can guess what it is. You can guess pretty easily. You just gave it away for those who are in the know of what it is. <laughs> I mean, I, people knew it was coming. And I think I also told people approximately when it was coming because I was looking at the tracking not too long ago. But it came like a week early, actually. So you can type it. Dan would know. 100%. You can type it. Because if you know it, then that's the whole thing. Um, and I also have another package that came today. Just to the door. The other one they didn't leave at the door, which is kind of good, because I almost didn't want them to leave it at the door. I think I have to sign for it. Oh, and there's money owing for it, because the government thinks I can get this service done in Canada for some reason. Which, maybe... <laughs> Starts with an L and ends with an X and doesn't have very many letters in between. Uh, it's locks. It's, uh... Not many words. <laughs> uh, fit that description, actually. I think locks. That's about it. Oh, not high enough. Come on. Uh, 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 I didn't go for it. I was trying to figure it out, but I didn't go for it. Because theoretically, these levels are easier. They're not, but they theoretically are. Ah! A Lynx browser install floppies. That's right. Installing links on the computer. Uh, so we can uh, emulate it. No, it's the Lynx. Annie Lennox! Oh, there's another good word. Yeah, Annie Lennox is gonna come sing for me some Eurythmics favorites. Um, and I won't let her leave till uh, she does. <laughs> oh, get that in. Oh, 
Oh, another word, larynx. I'm getting a new larynx. <laughs> it has to be, uh, had to be kept on ice the whole time. The installation is going to be a little difficult, but, uh, should give me a whole new, uh, whole new voice. Hopefully it's from somebody that's gone through puberty. Don't want it too high. Does the larynx involve the vocal cords? Or is that is the larynx the whole structure? It's a good question. Can't really look it up. Oh, let her go when she can beat room 67 on this. Oh, there's that meme where somebody gives oh, what is it? Oh, battle toads to their kids? I think that's the game. They're like, okay, if you win this game, we'll buy you a PS5. Or they gave them some other hard game. I can't remember what it was. And it's like, well, good luck to that. Come on. There we go. I can't believe it's hitting the ceiling. That's how I died a couple times. It's not how you should die. Hitting the ceiling is like a basic mistake not be hitting the ceiling. No dancing on the ceiling. Oh, God. Wasting my... One more chance. Nope. <laughs> Wasting my time. Ah. Yep, it's the uh, consoleized Lynx from Atari Gamer. Um, I will go over everything he uh, changed on it briefly when I unbox it. But it is as modified as you can get a Lynx. Um, nowadays. He even installed something brand new on it. Um, that I don't think's been done before. I, I can't see it not being done before. But not in the way he did it, at least. Which is super awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, the government says I owe like $70 for it for not buying it in Canada. Well, I didn't just buy it, not buy it in Canada. I got it modified somewhere else and nobody can do what I got done. So it's like, so really what they're saying is like, well, just don't buy it because you're either going to have to pay the price or not have it. It's like, well, I do want it. I already paid a lot for it because Link's handhelds are not cheap anymore. They're not expensive, but they're not cheap. funny thing of comparing prices of like old consoles and what you pay now for them it's actually less way less with inflation than what you paid originally for them like i think every console Ooh, do i want that no not that early oh my god this is like worst case scenario yay an n I have to make it to room 70 on my own volition. <laughs> oh, good practice, I guess. Ah, uh, last chance. No! Electrocution. Uh, like, you can always choose between lava and execute ele electrocution each time you um, die. Just fall into the lava pit. Get zapped. What was I talking about? Yeah, like say the most expensive boxed Atari. Uh, chess piece Atari. Well, maybe not chess piece Atari. But like boxed Atari. It's not going for over $900. Some might, but usually not. Unless it's in pristine condition and like boxed up and everything like that. And it's a chess piece and has the hex discs and it's unopened, etc., etc. Um, it was like $900 in now money if you convert it over to 2022 money from 1977. Um, but let's say the next most expensive, like a Neo Geo, you can buy a Neo Geo for less than what inflation demands. It'd have to be a loose Neo Geo, mind you. Got the J too early. Yeah, 
I'm not going to go for the warp. Or am I going to go for the warp? Yeah, I'm not going to go for the warp. Until I hit room set 67. Just makes sense. Less difficult rooms to do. No, nope, nope, don't get that A. So you can pick up a, a loose Atari 2600 for very inexpensive, way less than $900. $100. Depends which model, of course. Oh my god, that was close. It shouldn't have been. Don't hit the ceiling. Damn it, you room 64. See? I'm three away. Five, six, seven. Three away. If I do the warp, I'm five away. This is the much better way of doing it. We're going to... You're my jogging soundtrack today. <laughs> yeah, it's a podcast of me talking about random things and jumping sounds <laughs> from Wall Jump Ninja. Oh, getting hot. But I'm still doing really well. That's the problem. Like I'm one off of what I've done best. Like it says room 66. That's only because I warped to 65 and did one accidentally. That doesn't get me closer. That's that's still not as close as what I'm trying to do. Um, I haven't been able to jog. It's because it's been too hot, even at night, even when the sun's down. It's got it's just too warm out. There's no way I'm getting up at 6 a.m. to jog. But I hope because I have um, a 5k run in like October? September? I'm gonna have to look it up because I have to I'll have to get either run at night or run early in the morning and I I'm gonna pick at night because <laughs> early in the morning is not who I am. I am a night person. Do I want that? That's yeah, a bit early. What else should I talk about? Oh my god, that was close. So, uh, each time I went... No! It's way too early. It's way too early. No. It's a waste. Guess it's practice time. Nope. Doomed! <laughs> uh, oh, okay, yeah, for uh, the first Burning Man, I went with my friend. Second one, uh, I went with a friend that I kind of knew from online, but I met him a num number of times. Um, third time, I went with Tanya. And we, oh, yes, okay, first time, uh, I went with um, a friend, and we had a tow-along trailer. And we took a car down, which was which was fine. It, it got hot inside the trailer, but you know you get up when it gets hot, and you just stay out at night as long, and and then you go to sleep when it's uh, really early in the morning. <laughs> okay, and the second one, I stayed in a tent. Terrible. Uh, it's not sand there. It's not a sand desert. It's a dust desert in Burning Man. Um, so the dust gets through the tent. It was awful. I was covered head to toe in dust the whole time. Never, ever again, I said. I will do anything to not... I don't want that J. Uh, to not be in a tent. Exposed to the elements. Um, the third time I went with Tanya and we rented uh, an RV. Kind of a, I guess a medium to large R RV. Because we were planning on going with other people. 
but uh, they couldn't make it at the last uh, minute. So we still kept the RV size. So it was a lot of room for us, which was really nice. Um, and this time we got the big RV. Don't get that. The biggest RV we could get, rental here. And, um, oh my God. And we have four people. Get that A. Make it to 67. Damn it! I'm 63. So brutal. And it's it's not even like the size of me. It's like just a bit bigger than size of me. Um, so we'll have less room this time per person, but I think it'll be more fun with a group of people. And we've got a big tent, um, like a covering, not like a tent, but like an outside tent with walls and that we can set up our tables in. It's a 10 by 20. We've got a bunch of tables. And it has um, white, it's a white tent, reflective, so it's not gonna be hot. And and it has walls for every section of wall you could have, so you can completely enclose it. And I'm bringing a projector. Um, it's like the cheapest projector I could find because everything gets destroyed you bring to Burning Man. It just gets dust in it, everything. You have to cover everything up. But electronics overheat because you're covering it up, so it's, it's a give and take. Um, but I bought it knowing that I would probably destroy it, but I can probably open it up later and um, clean it out afterwards. Um, so we're going to project it on the side of the tent. And in last year when we brought a covering, or not last year, last time, oh, I got the J way too early. Um, we had it like an assembled one, you had to put all the metal pieces together. And uh, it actually took a long time to assemble it. Oh, come on. Oh, one more. Uh. And you had to really work at it to get these pieces assembled. And so they were really stuck together and we couldn't even unstick them after Burning Man. And we uh, took them home, kind of assembled in the RV, sticking right through the main part of the RV. And we couldn't get them apart. And still, and we had to throw them away because they rusted together. And it wasn't that great of a tent anyway. It was okay. This one is a really expensive one. And you pull it open. Every, it's, it's assembled already. And it just crunches up really small. It's like those accordion tents. It's so heavy, like really heavy. It takes two people to move it. Um, but assembly time is literally five minutes. Um, it'll take longer to pound the, uh, the posts in. Last time we had um, rebar that we po pounded in with a sledgehammer. Um, that was torturous. This time we're taking lag bolts, which are like massive, massive screws that you screw into the ground, and we're taking a drill uh, with a hex bit that will uh, screw into the ground. And I saw demonstrations of it, and it just goes in, just goes into the ground. It's, it looks so fast. And that's to hold down your tent because there's crazy winds. Oh God, stupidity. Um, so the tent is going to be, uh, the outside tent's going to be good. And we have two tables, a bunch of chairs, and what, oh yeah, what I did, uh, like, for Burning Man, you want to bring, everybody, there's no money, let's start off with that. There's no money there, there's nothing to buy, there's nothing to sell, you're not allowed to sell. 
Uh, the only thing you can buy is ice because it's very, very important to have cold things. So they sell ice for like, not cheap, but they give money to local charities around there. Um, so you buy ice and they take credit cards. So you still don't need physical money to bring. Uh, distracted by the winds. Yes, I was. Uh, uh, they used to have coffee. Last time we went, this is the first year without coffee. They used to sell coffee, and I guess tea? Hot drinks at center camp. But uh, none of that this year. Uh, people are not happy about that. Because it's so nice to just wake up and go get something to drink. I mean, I don't drink coffee, but Tanya was a bit disappointed. So we'll have to, we have to bring our own coffee-making devices this year. I don't know how people can drink coffee in the heat anyway. Oh, I thought it was going through that. I was not. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, I need that. Um, so what you want to do is contribute with either your camp. Your camp does something unique or fun or it helps, helps people. Um, or you give out something you make. That's that's usually what most people do because that's all they're really capable of doing. Because it's it's hard to make big structures or plan something big. One second. Oh, fuck me. Damn it! Oh my god! No, it stops there. Yeah, you can jump over the electric fence, but it stops so you can't make another jump. Ah, uh, room 63. How did I get room 66? Oh, because I forwarded, and then I happened to make it one. Ugh. 327. We're going to do a, five more runs. Five more runs? Five, three, five. Yeah, we'll, we'll go to quarter to four. Um, okay, continuing on. So people usually make stuff. Um, what I made last time in 2013 were, uh, were postcards. Because there's an actual post office there that you can mail to outside, the outside world. Um, if you put a stamp on it, a proper stamp, they like take it back, I don't know, maybe after Burning Man's over? I don't know if they take it during Burning Man, they probably just stack it up. Uh, I made postcards, but I printed them out in my own printer. And uh, they were not happy about the quality of the postcard. It was printed on the thickest cardboard stock I could put through my printer, which is not very thick. Uh, and they said, well, they almost didn't let me mail them. But I got them to mail them, and they're like, this is probably not going to survive the postal system. Um, but I'd say most of them did, 75%, which they kind of gave me the impression that almost none of them would, but um, but they did. But this year, I got them professionally printed with the thickest uh, postcard stock I could find, or I could order through the place I ordered it through. And so the, hopefully they'll be happy with me this year. So what I did is made postcards, and it was, you know, it had Burning Man on, nice design or whatever. Um, and it said Burning Man 2013. And this one says Burning Man 2022. And I put a design of artwork that Tanya made. Um, so it's kind of personalized. Well, very personalized. Oh my god. One second. Damn it, room 62. Um, and I'll be getting that in like a week before, uh, so it's a week before we go, because I think it's like two weeks now. Two and a bit. Uh, Jesus. So how many games is that? That didn't count. <laughs> five good games. Five good games. So I, that was a good game. Above 60 is a good game. What am I doing? 
I'm not going to self-sabotage you. This game is so unforgiving. It is. It is hard. Now you can see why I can't. I haven't been able to get the world record. Last time I played this was 2019, trying to get the world record. Um, I don't know what I got that day. I don't think I did super awesome. I, don't, I think I'm doing better today than I was doing then. Now you know why I have to do a long stream repetitive, because... It's just the chances of getting through those holes and pressing it exactly the right amount of time and letting go of the exact second to get it through. It's so hard. Oh, I love this game. It's so good. And it's... And you play it slightly different each time you play it because you miss sometimes and you try different tactics. Like, oh, I'll go under the thing, or I'll go over this one next time. It's mostly the same, of course, that I'm trying to do. No. Oh. So early. Okay. Um, so I make the postcards, and uh, to make it easier, I also pre-stamp them. So I buy some stamps down in the U.S., because I'm not going to buy Canadian stamps to use in the U.S., because that doesn't work at all. So on the way down, I buy, I buy stamps, and I buy X number for international slash Canada, mostly for U.S., because most of the people there are from the U.S. Yes. Or want to mail people. Come on! Mail people in the U.S. I'll count that one as a good one. So I've done two good ones. One button gaming's always a treat. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, people really loved it. So I thought I'd do it again this year for lack of a better thing to do. Because <laughs> I couldn't think of another, uh, another thing to give away. And our campmates are going to be giving away freezies. They're going to buy just a ton of freezies. Because anything cold at Burning Man is more than appreciated. Um, cold drinks cold spray of water on you. Um, so I think freezes are going to be a big hit. Um, they're not called freezes in the US. Um, what are they called? Ice pops? They're like frozen colored sugar water in a tube, if I had to describe it without naming it. Uh, Otter pops as well, I think there's a name. Strange names. But we call them Freezies in the U.S. because that's like a brand name, so... I'm looking forward to those Freezies, too. So, if I want them, then everybody else will want them. Thing that most people give away is alcohol, actually, at Burning Man. Just enormous amounts of alcohol flowing there. Um, but because the U.S. has 21 and over laws, you have to bring your ID or a photocopy of your ID to all the camps as you tour around them. Um, I think the gray in my beard should help. Oh, come on. I'll count that one. That's three good ones. But I'm going to do a photocopy, well, print out, scan and print out of my ID and tape it to my cup, which everybody says to do. And you also bring a cup with you. And we bought uh, carabiner cups. So when you're not using them, you just click them on your belt. Don't even have to carry them. They're just with you all the time, and you always want to carry them. Because there's people, like, there's people making drinks, like margaritas, out in the middle of nowhere at Burning Man. Once we went to the very, very, very outer edge of Burning Man, which takes, like, 40 minutes to bike to, and there was a guy making margaritas, I believe, on his bike, and he had a tow behind. And we were like, hell yes, we want margaritas. Nice cold margaritas. Uh, RC70s, we call them freezies in Buffalo too. That might be because, uh, can't watch it. I'll look at the rest of the comment after. 
I'm finished. It's too intense, this game. You, you can't... There's no stopping. There's no pausing. Like, you can slide down the wall and you die if you pause. You can hold down the button for an instant jump off the wall as soon as you land. It was close. I was so close. The ever-looming threat of the electric wall behind me. It's so menacing. It's such a great concept for a game. Just barely hit my head, room 63. Oh, room 63. My menace. That's four. Is that the fifth one. Damn, room 63. Why do you taunt me so? I almost got a foot full of lava there. We all bought the giant ones they used to sell at a small Crystal Beach convenience store at some point in your childhood. And Buffalo is very near Canada, so there might be some cross-border. Because things, like, kind of leak across the border both ways in Canada, U.S. Um, so people in northern um, states get, a lot, get some Canadian things because they're aware of them, or people import them, or you go across and buy them, bring them back. And... Most of Canada actually is on the border of the U.S., so we are aware of a lot of uh, American products. But I will be bringing down ketchup chips, <laughs> definitely, because there will not be ketchup chips in the U.S. And if you have not experienced ketchup chips, potato chips, you need to. It is magnificent. But I think people in the U.S. are like, ketchup on your potato chips? That's weird. It's not. It's glorious. It's, uh, it's, it's not just sweet. It's got that, um, slight bite to it from the vinegar aspect of it. And it's got the sweet and sour. Not bitter, so Sweet and sour balance that's just so perfect with the flavor of ketchup. And who doesn't love ketchup? Come on. It's just sugary goodness. So if you ever get a chance, if you're in Canada, or are there Canadian stores in the U.S. like, oh, a special Canadian, or Canadian aisles in your super, in your grocery store? Because we have, like, British aisles. Oh, God. Damn it. 61. Cross-border confections. Ah, uh, one more. Okay, one more where I have to make it to level 62 or 63. And then I am done. Disappointing. One off my record. But because the other guy made it to level 69, I can't just, like, I have to, I have to use a warp on level 67. British Isles. Uh, 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 uh. Put ketchup on fries, right? They're potatoes too. Yeah, imagine that, but in... Like, people put, put ketchup on fries, like, every day, all day. Think of that in crunchy form. Tasty, tasty, crunchy. Nom, yum, yum. They're common here in Europe, Heinz ketchup. Yeah. They know what they're doing. We can't bring any uh, fresh things across the border, like fresh fruit or vegetables. Um, but you can buy, you can bring packaged st stuff. So chips are all good, just because of um, there might be animals in them, whatever, flies, maggots, who knows, just bad things. And you don't want to be turned away at the border because you brought an apple with you. 
I don't know if they would uh, just take your apple or be like, nah, we put up a sign. You should know better. <laughs> don't bring apples across the border. Good thing about this game is that the electric kind of fence resets when you go through a wall. It doesn't just go behind, it, it like actively resets. So you have the same amount of time every time you do a... Ah! Didn't count! Room 61. I said 62 or 63. More of a salt and vinegar type myself. I love salt and vinegar. So good. Except I can't eat very many of them. It just wears away at, like, the roof of my mouth and my cheeks too quickly. I want to eat more, but my mouth goes, no, you've, you've burnt it with acid. It's too much. And the salt, <laughs> the salt is getting in the acid uh, parts where you've, it's eaten away at your mouth. So you have to stop now. It's the same with candy. It's like you can get, eat candy to a point, usually sour candy. And then it's like, my stomach says yes. My taste buds say yes, but my mouth says no. More acid, more citric acid. Pain is part of the appeal. The roadway of forgotten apples. What? <laughs> Yeah, you have to wait till you get to the U.S. to buy the vegetables that came from Canada in the first place. But they're inspected. That's the difference. No, I guess they just don't want to inspect every apple that goes across the border. <laughs> yeah. That's true. There's a lot of... Because um, we have an area in Canada that's like... Um, five hours from here, where a lot of fruit is uh, grown. Like uh, fruit tree... Like fruit, I guess that's the only kind of fruit there is. Um, like apples and not, oh god damn it. Not like oranges, not citrus fruit, but like um, pears and apples and things like that. Yeah, it's in the Okanagan. So I can see a lot of the fruit from the Okanagan going across the border. But you guys grow a lot of that stuff too, so I bet there's not tons. Unless it's just made cheaper here. <laughs> cheaper than you can make it in the U.S. Then you get the imports. I, th I think ketchup is my favorite. Out of all the chips. Uh, what other ones do I like? Just a variety of flavors. Um, malt vinegar? That's good too. Because it gives a bit of a heavier flavor to the vinegar. You still get all the salt, of course. All, all chips are salted to some degree or another. Oops. Looking at the time. Yeah, it's quarter to four. This will be, be perfect. Feed the cats. Prepare for the next shows. Uh, the six o'clock show I'm, I'm prepared for. It's the one after I need to uh, do a bunch of prep for. I think it's going to be a blind uh, uh, show like last time. I'm not going to know the games. Going to have to go for some help from the crowd. Uh, but that was kind of fun last time. Unless it's like one that I know you need to do something special for, like space shuttle or something. Hopefully we don't encounter space shuttle. So I'll, I'll have to concentrate on that and get that ready. And even if we do play Space Shuttle, it's going to be, like, really quick. <laughs> Not enough time to, like, barely get... Probably won't even get it up in the air. Ah! One more? Nope. 63. So where I maxed out today, pretty much. Oh, you're filling your neurons, the one bit information with that game, pressing just one button. Keep going. Oh, I'd like to, but I just have not been able to break that 63 barrier. Even though it says 66 on the, on the title screen, that's the other method of getting ahead, which is harder than the one I'm doing. So 
that's it for now. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to do it again. I am going to play it again. Even The game even has a demo. I think it plays like random amounts of button pressing. Like it like, once it hits a wall, it's like, should I press it instantly to like one second? It's a good demo. Is it smart though? I don't think it's smart. Oh, maybe it is reading the wall in front of it. It is. It's, it is reading the wall in front of it a bit. No, maybe not. <laughs> Because the computer could play perfectly, though. Thanks, Dan. Um, so, the Atari Age forums update, it's still down as of, what was the update here? As of 4.30 Central Time, that was an hour ago. Um, files are still copying. I'm guessing he's going to do an update when the files are all copied. Um, I'm guessing it's going to go fairly late into the night, if not into the morning. So that's why we're here to entertain you while the Atari Age forums are down. Um, but coming up next, uh, we're going to be back in about two hours at 6 p.m. Pacific Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we're going to play two Jaguar games. Atari Jaguar games, they are multi, they're mini games, a bunch of mini games, Brawn and Brains. Brawn and Brains and the Dr. Typo collection. So that it might be pre-programmed. If it dies on the exact same spot it is. Probably be easier to do pre-programmed. It's like delay, jump. Actually it just needs to know how long before it needs to press the button. It's just a list of numbers, like however many jumps. List of 12 numbers, that's easy. Um, hi kitty. So we'll be back. Uh, to play those Jaguar games at six in a, just over two hours, and then we'll be doing uh, 1983 Part 3, where we get back into hopefully better games. We'll see. Well, you're very welcome, Laid. Uh, if you have not followed the stream, uh, it'll let you know when we come back, um, and it'll go up on your screen or your phone or wherever you watch uh, Twitch stuff. Uh, oh, am I full screen? No, I'm not. Let's go full screen. And turn off the noise. There we go. Say, so say bye bye, Sprite. Bye bye. And you can see the gray cat, Atari, in the other in the other cat cam down there. It's so hot. Whew. The demo play of this game resembles classic 2600 games. Shows you on not, how not to play. Yes. Perfect timing. Thanks for the end of work and running sound and game. You are welcome. Um, right to the end of work great now you're off work so have a happy tuesday but we'll be back in two hours um stay tuned i have to feed these cats before they attack me and chew on my toes so we'll see you soon um one second i'll get it ready so we can do a proper bye okay see you soon everyone bye bye